All right, hello again, everybody. So hopefully you are now done with your lab um, and you are uh, ready to kind of dive back into this problem that we started a few days ago. Again, I did ask you to try to leave some space in your notebook. So hopefully you did do that and you're able to revisit this problem today. Now, if there's not that much time left of the period, uh, that's okay. Just watch uh, as much as you can of this, and then I will follow this up on Friday when I get back. But there is something else that I wanted to do with this problem. So let's kind of remind ourselves of what was going on here. So this was a horizontal toss, right? I did uh, toss this ball in this case, all right, in this problem. I did toss it horizontally from, I don't know, I guess this cliff or wherever it is that I'm standing. And after five seconds, it hit the ground. So we started by needing to find the initial velocity of the throw. It was just like the first part of the lab that you did, where you had to find the initial velocity of the launch after you launched the marble horizontally. So same thing here, right? We know how long the ball was in the air for, which was five seconds. And we know how far it went, which was 25 meters. Again, same thing like it was in your marble launch. So the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Again, for all of these problems, you're just going to neglect air resistance. So your acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. So in the x direction, we have a constant speed, just like in the first part of your lab. So that means that the delta x, 25 divided by 5, we had a velocity in the x direction of 5 meters per second. And in this case, since it was a horizontal toss, I'm going to come back over here to the left, right? Since it was a horizontal toss, the initial velocity is also 5 meters per second because all of the velocity is only in the x direction. The initial velocity in the y direction was zero. There was no initial velocity in the y direction for this toss. Same thing with the horizontal launch of your marble. So the initial velocity was five meters per second. And then we use that to find the maximum height here or the, the height that the ball fell at, which ended up being 122.5 meters. This was the vertical displacement for the ball that was being tossed in this problem. But I want to do something else with this problem. I want to figure out how fast was the ball going when it hit the ground. So what is the velocity here? And what is its direction? That's what I want to find. And that's what I'm going to do with you in this video. So let's see how we might be able to figure that out. So I'm going to go to the next page here. And again, this is going to be the final velocity of the ball after it hit, sorry, not after, right before it has hit the ground. So here's the ball, right? It's coming down and it's going to hit the ground. And I want to know what is the velocity right here. And I want to know the direction. So I'm going to draw a little triangle for this. Basically what we have is this VF now is my vector. That vector, that VF vector, is going to have X and Y components, just like any other vector in two dimensions. So here is VF, sorry, VYF. Here is VYF. And here is VXF. VXF. And I, I, I know one of these things already, but I'm going to get to that in a second. So and the other thing that we need for the direction is this angle. So I want to know this final velocity vector and I want to know the direction that it's at. So you may be tempted to just go ahead and use one of these equations, right? Like I'm just going to write the, the VF equation here. You may be tempted to do that, but we can't just do it that directly for this problem or for any two dimensional problem because we need to know the velocity in each direction, the component in each direction, so that then we can use Pythagorean theorem to find this VF. 
the resulting VF velocity vector. Again, that velocity vector is resulting from the two components, and we need to find each of those components in order to find that resultant vector. So we can't just use this just straight like we have been. We need to use, or we need to find each of these components. So what we need in order to find this, we need to find the VXF, and we need to find the VYF. These are both of the things that we need. But wait a minute, if I go back, we already found the VXF. See, it's right here. I purposefully wrote this before, the last time that I did this, that the VXF is 5 meters per second. It's 5 meters per second because there's no acceleration in this direction. So if there's no acceleration, then the, the velocity that it was in the beginning, which was 5 meters per second, is also going to be the velocity that it is at the end. So the x direction is still 5 meters per second. So we actually know what this is. This is 5 meters per second. I'm sorry, not 5 meters per second. I, I, I said that like 10 times in a row, didn't I? Sorry, not meters per second. Meters per, I mean meters per second squared. It is um, end acceleration. So 5 meters per second. So the y component here how can we possibly find that? Well, I'll just go back again for one second here. So again, in the y direction, it has no velocity at first, right? The initial velocity in the y direction is zero. We had that here in our kinematic equation that we did. Because it is not falling down yet when I release it, I release it horizontally. So it is not moving vertically as soon as I let it go. So that means that in the y direction, right, I'm going to write it up here, in the y direction, my initial velocity, my vyi, is zero. It is not moving in the y direction yet as soon as I release it. There's something else that we know about the y direction. We also know the acceleration. It's g, right? It's little g, 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know the time. Right, we know the time that it took to fall down. Again, just like in your marble, right? Just like in your marble lab, it took this one took five seconds to reach the ground. So my time is equal to five seconds. So if you look at this, hopefully this equation stands out to you, right? Vf plus vi plus at. This is how we can find our final velocity in the y direction. So let me just rewrite this equation with the y's. So vyf equals vyi plus, I'm going to write a g here. I want you to get just used to the idea that it's a little g. So now I can just plug in these numbers. I don't even have to do any algebra. Not only do I not have to do any algebra, but this vyi is just zero. So my vyf, sorry, my vyf, yf is just negative 9.8 times 5. Negative 9.8 is negative 49. And yes, the negative does matter here. I'm going to explain that in a second. But make sure to just keep track of your negatives that you're doing. So, I now know my final velocity components. I know my components of my final velocity in each direction. This is negative 49. So now, I'm going to redraw this triangle. Let me just make a little bit of space. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to redraw this triangle with the values that I know. So I don't know my VF yet. I haven't found it. But I do know that this is negative 49. And I say that the negative matters because it's going down. Right? It's going down. So this is 49 in the down direction. If it wasn't that way, then my final velocity vector would be pointing like that if it was going up. But that's not what's happening. Right? It is going down. So I need to indicate that um, that, my neg that my 49 is in the negative direction, which is down. And then this, the x component, this is 5. So now if you look at this, we can do Pythagorean theorem, right? My vf squared equals my, uh, I'll, I'll just write it with the numbers, so 5 squared plus 49 squared. Just a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if I take the square root of both of these, then I can find my VF. So 
So the square root, I'm going to write the numbers here, 25 plus this, uh, 49 squared. 49 squared is 2,401, so the square root. So my VF equals the square root of both of these added together. That's 2,426 square roots. And my VF is equal to 49.25 meters per second. So it might seem a little weird that it's so close to the 49 the y components. But that does actually make sense. It makes sense because the 49 is so much bigger than the 5, right? So it makes sense that most of the velocity would be dominated by this component, which means that it's going to be pretty close. The resulting vector is going to be pretty close to what that component is. It's something for you to keep in mind when you do your own calculations on problems. If you have a component that's really big by comparison, right, then it makes sense that your resulting vector would be close to that big component. It's kind of a little hint for you to think about what, what you should be calculating close to. So what this is here, this is the magnitude. I know I haven't mentioned that word too much, but I'm going to start saying it more often. I feel like when you get into two-dimensional stuff, that's a good time to start emphasizing magnitude because it's when it really starts to matter, right? Vectors in two direction or vectors in a uh, 2D motion have magnitude and direction. So does every other vector, but the magnitude kind of is a little bit more important here because that angle could really be anything, right? So the direction could be anything now. It's not just like left, right, up, down. The angle could be anywhere, right? On 360 degrees. So this is the magnitude, which means again, just how big it is. So how big is that velocity vector? 49.25. So now let's do the direction. So how do I do that? Well, my direction, that would be this angle. So we want to find what that angle is. So in order to do that, we can just use trigonometry. So again, if I write out my, my triangle here, this would be the hypotenuse. This would be, here's my angle. This would be the opposite side. This would be the adjacent side. So if I do tangent of theta, then I get opposite over adjacent. So what's my opposite? I'm just going to keep writing it here. I'm going to write out the full thing, right? Let me just uh, write this a little bit more cleanly. So tangent of the angle equals 49 over, four, over 5. 49 over 5, that is just 9.8. So the tangent of the angle equals 9.8. So I'm going to have to erase my little triangle that I drew here. Sorry, I, I, I wish I could leave it, but I don't have enough space. So now I'm going to take the inverse tangent. Sorry. So now I'm going to do the inverse tangent, which means theta equals tangent to the negative 1, the inverse of 9.8. If you do that in your calculator, you will get that theta is equal to 84.17 degrees. That is the direction of my vector. It is 84.17 degrees measured from that angle that uh, I have it at. So here comes my ball. Right, I'm going to draw it over here on the, again on the right. So here comes my ball. It is going 49.25 meters per second, and it is hitting the ground at an angle of 84.17 degrees. Sorry, I know that's a little hard to see, but 81.7 degrees. Sorry, 84.17 degrees. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is a common thing in physics problems, and this is something that I kind of want you to understand how to do which is how to find a resulting vector using the components of that vector, both finding the magnitude and the direction of it. So if you don't fully understand this quite yet, that's okay. We are going to be talking about this for the next uh, few days and everything like that. Um, but hopefully you're able to follow along with everything that I did, and we'll talk about this a little bit more next class and the class after. So that's all I have for you now. I know it was kind of a lot between the two videos, but hopefully you're able to follow along and I will see you all tomorrow.
meaning Friday. Have a good day, everybody.